1974, Cleveland, Ohio. And as discussed before on this channel, Cleveland at this point is a hub of investment and growth. Yes, their river has been catching fire regularly, over 13 times by now. Here we go again. And yes, jobs are being lost en masse due to deindustrialization. But don't mind any of that. Cleveland's baseball team has big plans. See, beyond the horrific pollution and local economic depression, something even worse was happening. Cleveland's baseball sales were going down. That was it. Something had to be done. The Cleveland Indians baseball organizers gather round. Gentlemen, sales have been in the gutter these last few seasons. We need more people coming through those doors. It's then that someone has a brilliant idea. A baseball game where alcoholic beverages are stupidly cheap. Now Cleveland had run a similar promotion before in 1971, and it had gone very smoothly. So naturally, this time would be buttery smooth again. Now the average price for a beer in 1974 is about 65 cents. That's equivalent to around $3.57 in 2022. This game's beer would cost just 10 cents. That's equivalent to about 50 cents in 2022. Keep in mind that the cheapest tickets to the game were about half a dollar back then, and you've got a ticket and five beers for just one dollar. Not bad. But hold on. We can't let people go overboard. Right. How about we add a limit of six beers? Per purchase. Yeah, that's good enough. It was genius. A baseball game where beers cost 10 cents. What should we call it? Hold on. I think I've got it. It's perfect. And with that, the planning of 10 cent beer night goes underway. But before we move on, raid Shadow Legends. Do you have a mobile phone? Then why aren't you already playing? Enjoy slaughtering hordes of enemies. Raid has plenty of it. What about tons of bosses and new updates every month? Raid has that too. Like collecting new champions? Look around. Champions, champions, champions. Almost 700 champions. And the game's graphics. My god. But what about the actual gameplay? Well, sit back and strap in. Get together five of your boys and jump into any of the epic campaign missions. Faction Wars, Dungeon Crawls, or alternatively, hit the PvP arena and dab on other players. And Raid's just got a ton of new stuff. Look, is that a champion select event? It is. From January 16th to February 10th, all new players can vote on their favorite starter champion and get a chance to win prizes, including legendary champions, in-game items, and Amazon gift cards worth up to $1,000. Just download Raid from the links below, copy your in-game player ID, go to championselect.playarium.com, and enter your player ID and vote for your favorite champion. And over there, is that an unlockable champion based on UFC fighter Ronda Rousey? Yes, because why not? All you've got to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and February 20th, and she's all yours. Ronda Rousey is available for new and old players. Just use the special promo code RAIDRONDA in-game. And for 30 days, new players can click the link in the description or scan this QR code to get unique bonuses. Waiting for you right here. Is that a free epic champion? 100k silver? 50 gems? 2 epic skill tomes? My god. Raid Shadow Legends. Now pick up the phone and download the game. June the 4th, 1974, Cleveland Baseball Stadium. After weeks of comprehensive planning, 10 Cent Beer Night was ready to go. The Cleveland Indians and the Texas Rangers are in town and getting set to play each other later that evening. The beer trucks are coming in and loading up. So far, things are looking grand. There are also record numbers of people coming in. The average turnout for games last season had been a few thousand, but tonight, over 25,000 people had rocked up. That was over twice the amount they were expecting. Wow. The plan was working perfectly. But um, there is a little other thing brewing. See. The Texas Rangers and the Cleveland Indians actually have a little bit of history. Just a week earlier, 
Both teams had played each other down in Texas, and things got heated. The game had mostly been going smoothly. That was until both teams' benches emptied out for an all-out brawl mid-game. It didn't take long for fans to get involved, and Indians players are barraged by food and beer from Rangers fans on their way back to their benches. Cleveland's pitcher has to actually be physically restrained from climbing into the stands and fighting the fans. Also, at this point, Texas is being managed by a guy called Billy Martin. About Billy Martin, he drinks. A lot. Openly boasts about cheating to the teams he's playing against. And throughout his career, was hired and fired from the New York Yankees about five separate times. One of those times for punching a marshmallow salesman in the face. He also fought his own best player in the benches during a game, and even broke his pitcher's rib after having about four fights with him in a hotel. This was one night after almost having a fight with a groom celebrating his wedding night. It was fair to say, the man was no stranger to a fight, and this guy was the manager of the Texas Rangers for 10 cent beer night. It also turns out that he'd been having a jab at the Indians to the press, telling a reporter there wouldn't be enough fans at Cleveland Stadium to worry about. Cleveland's sports radio host spends the entire week amping up Cleveland's fans about it. Then there was the weekly papers cartoon of the Indians mascot, Chief Wahoo, who's holding up boxing gloves, saying, be ready for anything about their next game. Hmm. And tonight was the night Cleveland and Texas would finally play again. The only difference? 10 times the fans and 10 cents a beer. All that combined with a local economy of laid off factory workers, and 10 cent beer night's atmosphere was a bit uneasy. But nonetheless, the game begins and players start batting. The Rangers take the lead early on after their Tom Greaves scores a home run in the second inning, an inning basically being a round of play. Now, unsurprisingly, the crowd at this point is already absolutely hammered, and things are beginning to degenerate fast. After the home run, a middle-aged woman decides to run onto the field. Okay, not too crazy. Wait, hold on. Is she flashing the crowd? My god. She also runs up to the head umpire and tries to kiss him. He says he's not in the kissing mood. She's eventually removed, and the game continues. In the fourth inning, Texas's Tom Greaves hits his second home run of the game, and fans celebrate. It's at this moment that a man sprints into the field and slides into second base. He's also naked. By the way, the ground around a base is made of an almost gravel-like material, so this probably hurts. A lot. Security tries to catch him, but he slips away into the crowd, never to be seen again. Inning 5. A man and his son run onto the field and moon the crowd. It's also around this point that a Cleveland batter hits a line drive straight into the Texas pitcher's stomach, sending him to the ground. Cleveland fans in the upper stadium begin chanting, hit him again, hit him harder. The organizers are sat down, watching this unfold live. This is going swimmingly. However, it's at this point that someone bursts into the room. Gentlemen, a problem. The increasingly incredibly volatile and agitated crowd? No. We can't serve these beers fast enough. See, Early on, the demand for beer was so great that Cleveland staff couldn't actually haul the beers out of the trucks quick enough, resulting in very large, very angry queues. Hold on, what if we line the trucks behind the outfield fence and sell the beers straight from the back of the trucks? Genius. And beer trucks rock up to the fences and start pouring. Now back to the game, and the atmosphere is currently changing. See, it's 1974, and for some reason, in 1974, it's fairly common practice to bring firecrackers to games. And 10 cent beer night was no exception. A ton of fans have bought them, and by God were they using them. And hundreds are set off in and around the stadium. This results in a ton of smoke. That, coupled with people in the crowd banging literal war drums, gives the game an atmosphere more akin to a battlefield than a baseball game. But alas, the game goes on. And back on the field, Texas's Mike Hargrove is being pelted with hot dogs and spit. He's also almost hit with a gallon jug of wine. Firecrackers are now also being thrown into Texas's warm-up area, and the team members inside have to be evacuated immediately. Regardless of all of this, Texas is doing well, and currently 5-1 to one up. Now at this point, monumental amounts of beer and debris are being thrown onto the field, 
announces Ask fans to try and keep the field clean, and a tidal wave of beers are thrown in immediately after. An army of stewards are instantly deployed to clean it up. Meanwhile, in the outfield, fans have now actually thrown the tables separating them and the beers away, and are currently in the process of pillaging them. The bar staff also only consists of two teenage girls per truck, and unsurprisingly, they're now deciding it's probably time to leave. 10 cent beer night just got a 10 cent discount. The hordes rampage the trucks like wolves, but back on the field and the onslaught continues. Texas players are being battered with beers, empty cups, rocks, bottles, batteries for some reason, and more hot dogs. One player reckons he's hit with around 20 pounds of hot dogs. That's about the weight of a bike or a sledgehammer. Organizers are sat nervously, still watching this all unfold. Fans on third base are now actively deconstructing the padding of the stadium wall. They actually almost get it off and up into the seats. However, the army of stewards abandon their trash job and stop them, spending the remainder of the game making sure the wall is kept intact. The crowds were now also bolder. Tons of them run onto the field, throw their clothes off and start running around. Packs of fans are scurrying across the outfield more and more frequently. Streakers are everywhere. The seventh inning of the game commences, and most families and those that had remained sober had looked around and decided it was probably time to leave, leaving only a mass of belligerent drunks left. The ninth inning, the game's final one, and Cleveland Indians had actually managed to rally back, tying the game 5-5. Indians player Rusty Torres hits the ball and starts running. He gets to second base. The game-winning run is now in his reach. However, this is when things at 10 cent beer night hits critical mass. It's near the end of the final inning and Rusty Torres is staring down the barrel of a potential win for the Cleveland Indians. However, a 19-year-old in the crowd has a very different idea. He decides to make a run on field and grab Texas outfielder Jeff Burrows' cap. Burrows confronts the fan, but trips and falls. Now from the Texas bench's perspective in the dugout, it looked like the fan had attacked Burrows. Billy Martin is livid. He's quoted as saying, boys, let's go get him, before grabbing a bat and literally charging the field. All of his players behind him also wielding bats. On the field, they find Burrows unharmed, but their charge had started something ungodly. Now gone from the field were the goofy streakers and silly pitch invaders, and something morbid was replacing them. An army of fans had crafted knives, chains, clubs, and other weapons from the stadium's seats, fences, and other general infrastructure, and were now storming the field with them. It was clear, the battle royale had begun. Where be dropping, boys? Hordes of fans descend upon the field at breakneck speed and began looting. Biz? Delicious. Bases? Take them. Stadium debris? Nice. While a large number of armed fans storm the field, others stay back and continue air support by hurling bottles from the stands. And before long, there are 200 plus fans on field wielding Mad Max style DIY weaponry surrounding the 25 Rangers, with more fans dropping in constantly. The organizers are now sweating heavily. If we don't do something here, boys, things might start to get out of hand. We'll get security on it. Wait, hold on. We only hired 50 of them. Dear God. The stadium's organist steps in. It's all right, lads. I've got this. And he starts playing take me out to the ball game. Back on the field, and Cleveland's manager now realizes that the Texas Rangers are in serious trouble. He and his own men also grab their bats and go in, literally attacking their own fans in the process. Rioters begin throwing steel chairs at players, and Cleveland pitcher Tom Hilgendorf is hit in the head. The umpire is also hit on the head. He ends the game by forfeiting it to Texas and runs away. It was clear, the situation is becoming bad. So managers try to get their teams back to the benches and out of the stadium. However, on his way back to the benches, Texas's Mike Hargrove gets into a fist fight with a fan. By the way, 
The game's announcers are calling all of this out in real time. Tom Hilkendorf has been hit on the head. Ill he is in definite pain. Hargrove has got some kid on the ground and he is really administering a beating. Hargrove eventually gets the fan down, but is almost immediately hit by another one. However, the sight of the players swinging bats at the rioters starts to lower the rioters' morale, and they back off a bit. Seeing this, benched players form a rearguard, and players take advantage of what might be their only opportunity to get out. Both teams beeline to the benches and through the tunnels. They'd made it, leaving a violent mob of baseball fans alone on the field. In the midst of all of this carnage, a local sports writer is out on the field, attempting to interview people. He approaches multiple fans, but eventually gives up after getting punched in the face twice. Alright boys, take me out to the ball game clearly isn't working, and we have essentially no security here. There's only one option left. And the riot is eventually quelled by Cleveland's own SWAT team. And so, after thousands of dollars of damage, casualties left, right and centre, and a literal battle royale breaking out mid-game, Tencent Beer Night had come to an end. Of the hundreds of rioters in the field, only nine arrests were made. Throughout the night, 60,000 beers consumed, 19 streakers, an unquantifiable amount of damage to the stadium, and by the end of it, every single base stolen. They were never returned. It had been nothing short of an absolute travesty. There would be another 10 cent beer night held a month later. 